Emerging Market Equities DB Tracker MSCI China ETN Share Code DBCHIN. You know, I feel as though I'm, I'm speaking gibberish. <laughs> I, I'm like, this is actually English. <laughs> I well, could have made I'm, those slightly more, uh, you know. Thanks, sort of you know, for a Monday. <laughs> Wonderful. Just invest in China on the JSE. So there it's we go. China. <laughs> there we go. That's simplifying. But China is big and China is, is multifaceted and China is complex. So to get investment exposure in China for a foreign investor certainly is not easy. The easiest way for a long time have been investing in Hong Kong. So the China H shares, as they are called. They then there were the two other stock markets in China called um, Shenzhen and Shanghai. And on those, they've got two types of shares trading, the A shares and the B shares. Mm. The A shares, until quite recently, the likes of us would not even have been able to sniff at, let alone own. The B shares, to some extent, yes, more available to foreign investors, but with certain constraints on those. So why invest in something like the DBX tracker, MSCI China ETN? You see there, I go back to the jargon again. This is a way for a South African investor again with a single trade to get exposure to the second largest economy in the world and will probably in due course be the largest, the largest economy, economy in, in the world. world. And an investment in its stock market which is currently way behind in terms of its fair representation in global stock market indices. So there's a big catch up game that needs to be played here and the reason why the Chinese equity market is not fairly represented on the global stage is because of these yeah. foreign ownership limits which they now are gradually reducing or, or, or lessening, slackening, making it more available for foreign investors to own a piece of the Chinese pie, so to speak. Hmm. So <laughs> I that's like that analogy, so the Chinese words, pie. <laughs> when MSCI does the global indices, they underrepresent the Chinese companies because of these liquidity concerns. Because many Chinese companies, and we're talking here about ones like ICBC and China Telecom and so on, big global giants, <laughs> have all these different classes of shares and to arrive at the full capitalization of the company you have to add it all together. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. So for me this is an exposure argument. This has got nothing to do with do I think Chinese growth numbers are overstated or their bank debt is a, is a bubble about to burst or, the or their housing market or whatever. It's got implode. nothing to do with this. This for me is a structural demand for companies that already exist, that are massive, that are big, but that we've not been able to buy exposure I to. Like, I like this theme. And, and, and it gives and you something different. Exactly. And I think the other angle about it also is that this is not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, in June we've got MECI once again having to make this decision and it's not it's not a foregone conclusion that they will include China in their global indices to the same extent. And even when they do, they can't afford to do this at 100% of the exposure. It'll cause a tsunami in capital, global capital flows. They will have to do this in an incremental fashion. So for me, the 5 to 10 year theme is if you want to have your fair share share of the Chinese pie. Um, this is the way to start accumulating that exposure. So forget everything else that you hear about China. The motivation for buying this ETN is something totally different than the normal China stories the, that we is, talk. Doesn't this appeal to you? Uh, it is interesting. I mean, <laughs> obviously the meeting between Xi Jinping and uh, his lordship Donald Trump went quite well at Mar-a-Lago over the weekend. A lot of people thought it could break out into fisticuffs over trade policy or over <laughs> islands in the South China Sea or something, it actually went quite well, which is important because it means that in a way implied in that is that the rhetoric from America about China seems to be sort of dissipating considering how wild things were said during we, the campaign. We've got to call it hot or not. So for me, this is the hottest. We haven't checked the, the oh, share oh, chart yet. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> now, this is a bit of a funny share chart. It is the correct one and it is priced in rands mm. and mm. it has been around long enough. Mm. Uh, so that's what it looks like. And I guess yeah. it's the same thing because the Hong it's Kong the dollar is pegged to the US dollar. Exactly. And the uh, Rem Nimbi is sort of pegged to the mm. US dollar. Mm. So mm. it sort of would have got the same But if chart. you simplify this and you mm. just say, do you want exposure to what will ultimately become the largest economy globally in a five to ten year period, then this is a great entry point. Thank but, you, Brian. But, you but, you but, heard but, the but story. Wait, wait. A lot of the big companies <laughs> in that index we've talked about here on Hot Stocks and we've mm. often said, you know, they've got fantastically huge revenue and lots of customers, but the profitability is quite variable. 
because the centrally com managed Chinese economy, often corporate profitability is the least of their worries. Doesn't that worry you a little bit? Not at all. Not at all. Because, Paul, I want to take you back to South Africa in, in, um, in the post the 2001 crash that we saw. Um, and I want to remind you of what happens to valuations when there's a structural demand for shares. Mm -hmm. Over the period 2003 to 2007, we had inflows into the South African equity market by foreign investors that blew all valuations and all traditional ways of looking at share investment sort of valuations out the water. When there is a structural wave of money coming for a market, it does not care about mm. your valuation exactly. or your PE ratio. And that is my premise <laughs> exactly. for this investment. <laughs> and I'm with Marina 100%. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's go hard on this one. We're hot. Yes, exactly. <laughs>